So I'm working on this cover or reimagining of an old Steve Winwood song called Back in the High Life again. And my idea is to first speed it up and then edit out some of the parts, make it a little bit shorter of a song. And of course, the first instrument that I'll have to work on is the drums, because if they're not done nice and tight, then the foundation for the rest of the track won't be laid out properly. Now, if this were a standard rock or hip hop or rap song, then I could just play the drums myself. But if you're like me, then drumming isn't your first instrument. So when things get more complex, I turn to samples. And today's video is all about relaying to you the best way that I know how to craft an original or copy an existing drum part as naturally and realistically as possible. And luckily we have a lot of great tools that can do that. So let's dive right in. So I've got my MP3 of the track right here. I'm just gonna dump it into Logic and I'm going to right click on the region, go to tempo and I'm gonna remove the tempo information from the MP3. And now what I'm gonna do Gonna go to tempo again, and I'm gonna click on apply region tempo to the project tempo. And now Logic is going to analyze the whole MP3 and it's gonna make a tempo map as you can see right here. Now, when I see stuff like this, I don't like it. This most likely means that there's a time signature change right here. So I'm just gonna go through the track and manually input those changes into my global track right here. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so as I suspected, there's a bar of 6-4 before returning to 4-4. Four four, and this kind of comes up every time the vocal hook comes around. So that takes care of the weird tempo change. I did go ahead and do the edits that I wanted to do on the whole track. I cut out a significant amount in the intro and then some other parts as well. And then I sped the entire track up using very speed. I just did it by 6% just to give it some more kick. And then what I did is I just made a bounce and then dumped it back into Logic. So what you see here is my edited version. So let's put very speed back to zero. So I have my blueprint taken care of. So next I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna load up a software instrument track. I'm gonna put on Superior Drummer. And for this song, I'm gonna use the Hitmaker library, which is amazing. And since I'm on my Intel computer, I don't have access to Logic's stem splitter, but I do have RX11 already, and I pull up the RX11 music rebalance plugin. So what I can do is I can place it on the High Life track, and I can focus in on the drum set. And for some reason, it thinks that the drum set is the bass, but whatever, it works. So I just solo that. And it gives me like a grainy image of what the drum set sounds like in the track. Uh, you'll have to trust me that Logic's own stem splitter does an equally poor job <laughs> at this. Either way, it gives me enough to use. Is some of the stuff that I've covered so far just a little bit above your head? Then check out my Logic Pro 11 complete tutorial for the overwhelmed beginner on my channel. Also, if you haven't yet, then this is just a friendly reminder to like this video. Thanks a lot, let's get back to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call up an EQ and I'm gonna put a high pass filter all the way down to 200. Did I call this a high pass filter? I meant low pass filter. And then I'm going to export this as its own audio file and I'm gonna call that the kick drum. After I do that, I'm gonna put a, a high pass filter on and I'm going to push that all the way up to 200, uh, maybe 180. And I'm gonna call that the snare drum and I'm going to export this as its own file and call that the snare drum. Then I'm going to go into Superior Drummer, go over to the Tracker tab and I'm going to take the kick and the snare files and dump them into Tracker. Now, as you can see, the kick and the snare are already being picked up by the algorithm. It's a little bit of adjustment, but not too much. Yeah, it picked up most of the hits. Now there are some drum rolls with a, uh, a lot of ghost notes, tracker and really any replacement software is not a very, does not do a very good job at picking up on that stuff. And that's why I didn't bother importing a track to pick up on the cymbals and the hi-hats. 
but more on that in a second. Really what I have here is a nice little skeleton to get us going. Next is something that is specific to Logic, but I would imagine that different DAWs have their own idiosyncrasies that you have to combat with. However, in Logic, what I do is I make an external MIDI track, and then I'm going to export this tempo map right here. I'm gonna export that into its own MIDI file, and I'm going to import it as a tempo map into Tracker. I understand that this might look like a redundant step, but trust me from experience, you're just better off doing it this way. I'm just going to choose my pencil tool and draw in a MIDI region, and then I'm going to drag that out for the length of the entire song. Double click on it, open up the piano roll. I'm gonna jump over to bar one and just insert a note anywhere, starting at bar one. Next hit Command U, and that selects the entire thing. I'm gonna export this selection as MIDI file. Call it High Life MIDI Drum, whatever. And I'm just gonna dump this track, go back to Tracker, load tempo map for MIDI file, load that up. And now here is my nice little tempo map. Next, I'm going to export this. And next to tempo, I'm gonna do the tempo map, drag it all down to combine it. Now I'm just gonna double click on that, go to the grid editor, and I'm going to insert a note at bar one again in Superior Drummer. And now it's finally ready to dump into Logic at bar one. And it'll sync up just fine. There's a little bit of flaming going on, but that's okay. Next, I just delete this from Tracker because it'll be playing two drum sets otherwise. Okay, so the next step is the most time consuming. I'm just gonna go to the point in the song where the drums really kick in. And what I do next is I set my locators to loop up for two bars. And what I do is I listen back to the drums. My main concern now is to just make a MIDI part that mirrors what the other drums are doing, or at least get it close in the ballpark. I'm gonna interpret that as this. So I'm just gonna record that from my MIDI keyboard or I could just input it manually. And I'm just gonna quantize these notes to tighten them up to a grid. And of course that sounds nothing like the original. In fact, it sounds terrible, but that's okay. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select these two bars. I'm going to cut them out I'm going to make another external MIDI track. Now, unfortunately in Logic, if I want to create my own MIDI file, then it has to start at bar one. So that's why I cut it out and I just made a new track and I dragged it to the beginning. Now I'm gonna hit Command U again, and I'm just going to go to File, Export, and Selection as MIDI File. And I'm just gonna call this MIDI Export 1. And I'm just gonna put that back into place, get rid of this. And I'm gonna go back to Superior Drummer. And under Grooves, I have this vast Grand Canyon of MIDI files here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the MIDI file I just made and drop it into this MIDI drop zone. And what that does is it gives me all these different possibilities of professionally played or programmed drum parts that of course sound more natural than the one that I just made. <laughs> so. Here we go. So that one sounds very similar to the drums from the original song. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag that from Superior Drummer into Logic. Now I'm just going to edit the kick drum and the snare to match the kick drum and the snare from the song. Mute that. And then I'm just gonna go to the next two bars and do the same thing. Go double that one up. So next step is to do this with the rest of the song. Of course, you don't have to get every individual drum hit perfectly. 
The idea is to just not interfere with the rest of the arrangement, especially the vocals or a lead guitar or something. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. All right, voila. Okay, so again, right here, I have the original drums. And then below it, I have the MIDI. Anyways, now I have a great foundation for the rest of my song. And then I did notice in the verses, there was like an electronic snare drum playing as well. I think just tucked in the background. So I loaded up one of the Hitmaker electronic kits. And just snuck that in there. And if all of the drummers that you know in your life are too busy smoking weed to get behind an actual kit, then this is a great alternative. Anyways, I hope that this video helped you out. And if it didn't, then I hope it entertained you in some weird way. Either way, please give it a like and comment if you have anything to say at all. And if you like this video or any of the other videos on my channel, then please consider subscribing. That's the best thing that you can do for me at this point. Also, I do have affiliate links on Amazon to hard drives and various pieces of equipment and if you buy one of those using one of my links, then I get a small cut, but of course the price remains the same for you. As always, I hope you make some great music on your own, and I'll see you next time. Thanks again.